Um, all of our gathering here today is celebratory in nature, and it's prompted by a quote from Churchill himself, of all the talents bestowed upon men, none is so precious as the gift of oratory. So today we're celebrating two celebratory goals. Through our youth, we honor Churchill and the power of words, an idea and belief that is central to the English-speaking union. Good afternoon, I am Christopher Volkovich from the British International School of New York and I will be representing the proposition today for this topic which is the government should restrict free speech in times of national emergency. As the head of the English speaking union explained, um, this topic is based on a Churchill quote which was something like, it is the duty of every citizen in times of national emergency to do or say or even to think nothing that can weaken the energies of the state. And as the proposition, we agree with that Churchill quote, and we thought that we would start off with that. Now, next I'm going to start by, with an introduction. So, just think about the power that one sentence can have. Just, just one sentence. One sentence can change the course of an entire day for you. Or, on a larger scale, it can cause international chaos. Some hasty remarks if made public can really cause international uproar. And nobody wants chaos, but it can happen so quickly, so suddenly, with or without the intention. Now I'm going to move on to the main part of my speech. Um, I have four, well, three assertions, and then one that's going to help out on some of my assertions. My first assertion is that a revolution in a during a national emergency would be very disastrous. My second is that the government could feel unsure of its actions in a time when it needs to have conviction. My third effort is that the entire country needs to be behind dealing with the emergency. And my fourth, well, it's not really an assertion, but is that there are more likelihood of complaint during national emergencies. So let me get started with my first point. Um, I'm going to say the first point deals with the possibility of a revolution happening in a time of national emergency. And what we're trying to say by this is that, is that if the government has to deal with a rebellion during a national emergency, that's going to be especially difficult for them because they have to fight the emergency and the rebels at the same time. And what that's most likely to lead to is the country getting utterly run over. And that is bad both for the government and for the people. And for those of you who think that revolutions are a fit of the past, all you have to do is look at Northern Africa and the Near East right now. If you look at Syria and Egypt and Libya, they've all been experiencing brutal revolutions recently. So revolutions are not a fit of, of the past. Our second discussion, the government could feel unsure of its actions at a time when conviction is totally necessary. What we mean here is that if there's strong opposition to the government or protesters, then the government could feel unsure about what to do. And if the government is unsure about what to do, it's more likely that they will not be as efficient as if they just carried through with their original plan. Even if their original plan was not the best idea, they will be better carrying through with it than with doing nothing. And again, if the government is faster at dealing with the national emergency, no thank you, then it will be better for the government and the people. My third assertion is that the entire country needs to be behind dealing with the emergency. For example, let's say the emergency is a war. Um, the entire country needs to help the government, or else the government could be betrayed and the whole country once more could be run over. This point was mentioned by Dr. John Garrett in a, in a speech he made. And also, other evidence that we have of this is in the Second World War, the United Kingdom was encouraging people to grow food to deal with the fact that supply ships were being, were being attacked. And basically, that's an example of how even people not directly involved in the conflict could be involved there. And the fifth, well, this is to back up my first and second assertions. 
but it's more likely to complain during national emergencies. This is because people like to have someone to blame. That is human nature. And in times of national emergency, the people, the, the economy will generally be struggling. The people will generally be in debt. They'll be unhappy. They'll be more likely to rebel. And that means that there's more likelihood of a rebellion or of the government feeling unsure of its actions, which were my two previous points. Just to finish up, we think that we need to give the government the option to reduce free speech. And we think it's very important that you as the audience and the opposition realize that neither is a restriction of free speech permanent, nor does it constitute a dictatorship. This is temporary, and we are not against principles of free speech. We only want to restrict it when necessary. Thank you. Uh, my name is Brian Schmidt from High School, and we are opposed to the process. Now, before I even begin talking, I know that you know the government has no right to take away our free speech. They even say they never can. Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. This is our First Amendment, the foundation of our government, the foundation of democracies around the world. The Founding Fathers knew how important this idea of free speech was, and so do you. Without free speech, our government would fall apart. Yeah. If we give the government this power, it is almost certain they will abuse it. The government has a history of abusing the power that we give it. The government abused the power given by the Patriot Act, and now holds captive journalists coming from other countries just because they now can. Uh, because these journals document things in these other countries that they, the government did not want to make public. They now are allowed to detain these journalists, and it happened to a journalist named Laura Caritas, who was detained after visiting from Iraq. Now, this is a horrible uh, uh, abuse of the Patriot Act, and it should never have happened in the first place. Uh, and it's a classic example of abuse. Also, if we start restricting uh, Rights, if basic rights given to us by our Constitution, it does put us, in fact, on a slippery slope to tyranny. If we allow the government the power to spend our most important constitutional right, what will they do next? Egypt can do this. They can take, they can stop the Constitution, they don't have to follow it. They can deny the people rights whenever they feel like in the Constitution. And look at them now. They're corrupt and are barely even a democracy. If we give the government, uh, if we give the government the power to spend the Constitution, then we are practically a dictatorship already. And also, you're talking about how the government will relinquish its power of the, once they start national emergencies, but the government has the power to define what a national emergency is. When so, when anything happens, they can call a national emergency and bam, that goes up. I mean, it's funny how many things can be used that could be considered a national emergency. And then there's no guarantee that we can give that right back, or they can just keep saying we're a state of national emergency. And our first people will never come back. Uh, and then he talked about revolution during national emergencies, how we are at a critical time and revolutions can happen. Uh, at any moment during a national emergency. Uh, I would like to say how very unlikely this is ever happening. He compared us to Libya and Africa, saying that we have the same chances of revolution as they do. And I'd like to say that I think we're a little different than Libya and Africa. Yeah. And it's true. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs>
Now, he also said that our government, uh, that in our government, one time national emergency is bad for us to protest, that it disrupts the political process. Um, I would like to just bring up a point of Vietnam. We protested that. Most Americans hated that war. It was a war that needed to end, and we all know. We protested that. What they're saying is that we should never protest in Vietnam. We should never have the right to be able to protest in Vietnam. And without that, that war could carry on for decades more. Protest there is one of these. And it said that our, uh, our people, our country, should not be allowed to complain during times of national emergency. What is that symbol again? Oh. Uh, well, there you go. Now, I just like you to imagine for all, imagine the world where the constitutional rights are invalid and the government is allowed to take away our rights. Imagine a country, the world that's black. Hello, my name is uh, Nicholas Kolovich, and I can't <laughs> Well, um, our team, the proposition, is fighting for that the, um, that the government should restrict freedom of speech in times of national emergencies. Now, um, let me start off with another quote from Mr. Churchill, which is that everyone is in favor of free speech. Probably a day goes without a vow and without it being stolen. But some people's idea of it is that they are free to say whatever they like. But then it's going to come back. That is an average. Now, um, that is basically um, uh, what our team is trying to say. That if um, someone criticizes the government in time of national emergency, then the government will fail and um, not be able to carry on what it wants to do. Now, my first assertion is how the how the government would react to upset in their system. Now, as we can clearly see in North Africa and the Middle East, the government reacted very rightly because of freedom of speech not being restricted. Now, in Egypt, for example, um, freedom of speech was not, well, not too heavily restricted, and people were starting to um, blog on Facebook about the revolution, and basically, this whole freedom of speech um, made Egypt fall apart. And you may say this is a good thing that um, Egypt is now better than it was before. But in reality, um, all these people dying is not exactly um, good because Egypt, if, if Egypt was fighting an external war and an internal war at the same time, that would be horrible for the government and the government would fail. And this usually is happening when revolutions happen in the time of war. Now let me give you an example of that as the Russian Revolution a long time ago. Um, the Ru Russia was fighting in the World War I and they had a revolution in the middle of World War I. Now this, this is a big deal because uh, lots of people died and well, it really, um, something really bad happened, which is uh, communism started to happen and um, lots of people so that is just one reason of how the government would react to an upset in system. Now, my, uh, my second point is that there is time and place for criticizing the government, but in times of stress, the citizens need to come together. Now, this is true because in the Bill of Rights, it says that people may not um, say any words that would jeopardize the government. Now, in this Bill of Rights, that is only one um, amendment. There are many other amendments, such as you are not allowed to um, shout on the street things that would um, that would make the government uh, fail and that would jeopardize the government. That would just different ways. And, and a very good um, example of a, the government trying to stop people from jeopardizing them is a campaign in World War II in loose, li uh, loose lips, sink ships, started uh, was started just to protect the, the um, England from other invasions. Now, um, what Winston Churchill said which is, um, it is the duty of every citizen in times of a national emergency to, uh, to not, uh, to, uh, to do, say, or to say, or even think that nothing can be can discourage an energy state. I think I said that correctly. Right? And, um, well, Winston Churchill thought of it as much broader thought than just World War II. Um, in any national emergency, the government, uh, the government should definitely restrict freedom of speech because not heavily restricted, but restricted because the government will definitely be able to be better 
by um, carrying out their original plan, like my colleague said before, and not being able to um, to get a revolution while fighting an internal and external war. Now, my third my third point is yeah, the government is secrets about national emergency, uh, about their national emergency to keep the country safe. Now, this point I borrow from NPR News, and um, my my biggest reason for this is without restrictions or secrecy. Or secrecy um, the government would never find Osama bin Laden because um, many people would talk about it and they would give out their, their opinion and freedom of speech. And since America restricted freedom of speech, and not really restricted, but kept it very secret um, when they were trying to find Obama for the past 10 years, um, they would have never found Obama. That is Um, revolutions still occur, occur and there are always because of no restrictions. Now, in Egypt, again, there wasn't very heavy restrictions. Oh, um, there wasn't very heavy restrictions, and many people died, and well, it wasn't very good. So this, this is why I think that you should vote for the um, proposition side, and why the government should restrict, but not heavily restrict, uh, in times of national emergency. The government should not restrict free speech during national emergencies. First, I'd like to describe one thing, the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights is a document added to the Constitution to protect the rights of individuals and make sure the government didn't have too much power and that individuals still had their rights. Now, the proposition claims there's an amendment to the Bill of Rights saying that you can't criticize the government. But the First Amendment to the Bill of Rights, and which is arguably the most important freedom, is the freedom of speech. And this is something that, even especially in national emergencies, must be kept in the U.S. First, I'm going to go to the U.S. And then I'm going to bring in our own arguments. First, the proposition says that the government would react badly and fail if people had freedom of speech. But people's freedom of speech can contribute to the success of the government. They contribute to ideas that could help solve problems, not make problems. Thank you. 
are going to be able to take away from whatever you please. Or you're going to err on the other side. Maybe you're probably not. Err on the other side and say that people can speak out against government, even in a national emergency. Because in all examples throughout history, every time the government has the power to take away free speech, it becomes an autocracy, and democracy is gone. For the rights of the citizens to remain intact, the people have to always have the ability to make free speech. Thank you. Thank you. 